Hey, it's Mr. Keys, and today we're going to learn a little bit about how major scales work and how chords work as well. On the piano, we can describe the distances between two notes. A musical word for the distance between two notes is called an interval. The closest distance between two notes is called a semitone. An example of a semitone would be C to C sharp, or C sharp to D, or D to D sharp, etc. Notice how there are no notes in between any of these two notes. E to F is also a semitone because there are no notes between them. Let's take a look at another type of interval called a tone. A tone is double the size of a semitone. So C to D is a tone. Notice how there's one key in between. D to E is a tone and we can see that there's one key between them as well. E to F sharp is a tone because there's a note in between here as well. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at a key called C major. Keys are defined by a set of notes and we're about to figure out what those notes are. In this case, C major is composed of all the white keys on the piano, from C to C. Let's look at these notes. The notes for C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then they repeat C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. How do we know what notes are part of a major key? Well, there's a little pattern which goes like this. Tone, tone, semitone. Tone, 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 semitone. So we have two tones first. C to D is a tone, and D to E is another tone. Then starting from E, we have a semitone, so E to F is a semitone. Then starting from F, we have three tones, so F to G is one, G to A is one, and A to B is another tone. Then we have one final semitone starting from B. B to C is a semitone. Every major key always has seven notes. Each key can only have one type of A, one type of B, one type of C, one type of D, etc. For example, a major scale could not have C and C sharp because then it would have two types of Cs. So we would have to rename one of them. We can form any major scale starting on any note using this pattern. Let's take a look at F major. So we start on F. F to G is a tone. Then we need another tone, so G to A is a tone. Starting from A, we have a semitone, so A to B flat is a semitone. We can't call it A sharp because we already have an A. Starting from B flat, we have three tones, B flat to C, C to D, and D to E. Those are all tones. And then starting from E, we have a semitone. So we have from F, we have a tone, then another tone, then a semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Let's try one more, A flat major. We start on A flat, which is right here. We go up a tone to B flat. Then we go up one more tone to C. Then we go up a semitone to D flat, up a tone to E flat, up a tone to F, up a tone to G, and then finally a semitone to A flat. If we don't use the naming that I just used, then we'll run into problems with having duplicates of certain letters. Let's go back to C major, which is a more friendly key since it's all white notes. There are a couple of other ways to describe notes in the scale. Remember, C major is C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Each note of the scale has a functional name and number. The numbers are more important to remember, but I'll list both. C, since it's the first note on the scale, it's called the tonic, and it has the number one. D is called the supertonic, or two. E is called the median, three. F is called the subdominant, four. G is called the dominant, which is five. A is called the submedian, which is six and B is called the leading tone, which is seven. The reason why this is important will be more apparent later on. 
there are many patterns that we will explore in music, and the number system will help a lot with that. So learn it well.